Hi everyone! So I've been really wanting to do this comments build a creature challenge that's been going on over at Twitter lately. I might be a little late to the party though as usual, but yeah, that is what I'm gonna do today anyway, using the smart art box. And I just wanted to mention it now because I actually decided to do this challenge after I had already opened the box, so I'm not really mentioning it during the unboxing. So yeah, now you know, this is future me letting you know about the challenge, so now back to past me for the unboxing. We have another smart art box to open. Feels like I haven't opened one of these in a while now, so I'm excited. It is a little dented in the corner, I really hope that everything is in one piece in there. And thank you SmartArt for sending me this box. If you would like to try out SmartArt yourself, I will have a link in the description box below. Oh, we got bubble wrap. Phoenix is looking at me. Oh, there is a lot in there, but let's start with this one, the smart art pamphlet or booklet with some tips and tricks about the art supplies and the art project that you can do using these art supplies. So we got that and we got a sticker. So let's see what we have here. We got the, oh, 24 markers. Permanent markers by Graphics Marabou and apparently there are different directions for the US and Canada how to use them, I don't know. It is the same directions there, so I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. No directions for European users, but I hope I will use these correctly. Oh, look at all those pretty colors. So here we have one of the markers, one and... Don't put on hand lotion before trying to open these. A little bullet tip at one end. And at the other end, we got a little fine liner nib. Look at that. These are alcohol based markers. So they should technically be working the same way as Copics or Uhuhu markers. So yeah, I am very curious to try them. We got marker boards and lettering boards from Crescent. And the marker boards are super smooth and perfect for all markers, ink and pencils. The lettering boards are hot pressed medium weight and they are perfect for all pen, ink, markers and brush lettering. We apparently get three of each. And we got a lollipop, a little crooked, it looks so sad. But the color is nice though. And then we got uh, this big board. They are very generous with the art supplies in this box. We got 12 sketch pencils in different grades or hardnesses. Oh, so shiny. Look how big that nib is compared to the others. I could probably open a graphite pencil museum with all the different graphite pencils that I've received in these boxes. And lastly, we got Free pigment liners from Art Alternatives, and these are water-based. We got them in the sizes 0.1, 0.3, and 0.5. Actually, my three favorite sizes, so that is perfect. I don't really want to swatch on the marker board, so I'm just gonna grab another piece of paper. All right, so let's start with a yellow one. I do actually really like having a fine liner nib instead of a chisel nib. Oh no, we got a broken nib. I don't think you can see it at all, but the nib is splitting. So there we have those, very pigmented and colorful. And I'm really curious to see how these are to blend, so... Yeah, you can actually get a quite decent blend. That is definitely approved. Then we have the fine liners. We have the graphite pencils. They are a little mixed up, I noticed. Here we have the pencils, and as you can see, the higher the H number is, the harder and lighter the pencil is, but the higher the B number gets, the softer and darker it gets. Also, let's try out the markers with the fine liners. Are they smudging? Yes, a little bit, but I think I will just have to let them dry a little longer before coloring over the fine liners. But yeah, let's get started. All right, let's see what kind of creature you want me to create. First feature of this 
creature. We have candy cane, suggested by Espressosaur, and the ears will be bunny-like, suggested by Annalimi. I'm sorry if I butchered the names, by the way. We will have a zebra head, suggested by Kila Woof. Zebras, they are cool and all, but they are basically horses, and I don't like drawing horses. What does a horse head look like? Not that, but it's just a sketch so far. Candy cane horn. Oh, and this might actually be perfect because candy canes are striped just like zebras, so maybe the stripes can just continue out in the face of the zebra. And some cute bunny-like ears. And then we have the eyes. Goat eyes, suggested by Buns Ginger. I think the thing with goat eyes is that the pupil is vertical instead of it is the wrong way, which makes them look a little evil. We have the mane, which will be ice lolly sticks, suggested by Cryptid Kid. Lolly sticks sounds very British for some reason. Oh, and they can also be striped to match the zebra. Very nice. Then finally, we have the body, Ooh, which is opossum, suggested by Sleep Depressed. So what does an opossum look like? It is that big rat thing, I guess. I've never seen one in real, so maybe something like this. I think they have quite short legs. And we have a little kitty butt. Then we have the hooves, suggested by Peachy Quinn, and they will be crystal. Maybe they will just be kind of like... No, not... Do not eat the pen. You want to draw weird creatures too? What? You cannot eat... No, 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 no. <laughs> but maybe I can make like a crystal shape. Oof. I will figure it out. And then we have the tail, which will be a peacock tail, suggested by Xarlandria. And I know peacock tails, they can either be like this, having the feathers down, or I can do it when it's all spread out. I think I like the down one better though, but we'll see. Then we have the colors that will be, oh, orange and purple, suggested by Drawn Vitus. Orange might not be my favorite color, Color, but I really like purple and orange and purple. I think they goes really well together when doing it right. I think I would have the stripes from the zebra fading out to the opossum body, but I do actually think that there are some stripes on the peacock as well, so maybe I can tie it together somehow. Then we have the last thing, which is special magical ability, and suggested by Hamster Minator, making flowers rain. That is is so cute. Also, what if little babies on the back? Because I think opossums are carrying their, their children around on their back. So I think having little babies on the back would really help to bring out the opossum features of the character. I think this will be cute or fun at least. So let's get started. All right, so I had so much fun with this challenge, and I also struggled so much with this challenge. I really liked the creature and the sketch and all that, but I guess I just had a bad art day when making this, but I pushed through it anyway, and actually at the end I do like how it turned out, so I feel a little rewarded at least. But yeah, it was a very interesting challenge. I am really bad at creating creatures just from my mind. So I think this is a really good way to practice. It is also great when having a bad art day like I did to let someone else decide what to draw. And then you can just blame it on them if you fail. No, but honestly, it is great when you need to get those creative juices flowing, but you don't really know what to draw. So yeah, I can really recommend this challenge. Challenge. And as I mentioned before, I love the purple and orange combination, but wow, it was so hard to combine them without it looking too silly. I mean, I'm drawing an opossum zebra unicorn with a bird's tail, but yeah, I went in with a more cartoony style anyway, so I think that helped a little with the 
silliness, I suppose. And I have to say, I do actually really like the marker pens, but they are a little more like Sharpies than actual art markers like Copics or Uhuhu or Winsor & Newton. Just in the way that the nibs are, the bullet nib is very, very small, which wouldn't be a problem if I had a chisel nib to fill in the larger areas with, or if I had a brush nib instead of the bullet nib combined with a fine liner, that would also work really well. But now they aren't really designed to be used for larger pieces, in my opinion, because it is very hard to get a smooth, even color with this tiny little bullet nib. It gets a little streaky. But again, I do love the pens. There's a good color variety and they are bright and very fun to use. Also, you may have noticed that I kind of forgot about the paper in the box, the artboards. I don't know, I was just so focused on getting started with these characters, so I just grabbed my usual Bristol board and started drawing. But I think the artboards included in the box, they would have been too small anyway. I don't like to draw detailed art too small. But yeah, I was a little unsure in the beginning, as I mentioned, if this would turn out any good at all. The art had a pretty long ugly face, as I like to call it, but when adding the line work and the details and some more colors around the uni opossum zebra with the flowers raining from the sky, I think it turned out pretty cute, to be honest. The goat eyes might throw it off a bit, but it also adds some more character, I suppose. And I also wonder a little where this creature would live. Is it on the savanna, like the zebra, or maybe in a cave because of the crystal? Hooves. Let me know what you think. I really liked using the marker fine liners for the outlines. I did use the black pigment liner too a little at the end, just to add some extra contrast to some of the details. But I mainly used the colored fine liners for the line work. Colored line work, it looks so great. It makes the art both softer and more colorful. I really think the line work pulled this piece together. It looked a little messy at first, but the lines makes it work a lot better, it ties it together. Another little feature that I struggled with was the peacock tail. It looks a little like a bush with flowers attached to the butt, but I guess a real peacock tail, it looks a little like that too though, so maybe I'm not that far away. And I'm really happy I added the little opossum zebra babies on the back. I think it really helped to bring out the opossum feature. And I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but I didn't give them horn. I think the babies are born without them, and then when they get older, it will start to grow out. And I think the same goes for the mane, obviously. I totally forgot to give the babies the ice lolly manes, but they do look so adorable with the bunny ears, I have to say. The crystal hooves were a little tricky, but I think after I colored them, they actually looked like amethyst crystals. It didn't turn out too shabby. And I also think it was very fitting, as I mentioned before, how well the candy cane horn works on a zebra's head. If zebras actually had horn, it would definitely be candy canes. But yeah, thank you lovely people over at Twitter that helped me create this creature. Let me know if you would like to see similar challenges in the future. I would love to try it out again, building a creature with the help of you guys. And thanks SmartArt for another great box. I will have a link below if you would like to try it out yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!